Hi, and welcome to this video where we will go through the new Odoo shop floor application. The app has been designed to replace the tablet view that you are accustomed to in previous versions of Odoo, so it has exactly the same functionalities, but a few extra new features. First of all, I would like to show you uh, how it looks like. So when we enter the shop floor application, we have here the main dashboard. The main dashboard shows uh, here a predefined filter called all which shows all manufacturing orders in our system that are ready to start because there is this predefined filter now you see it is grayed out why is that because there is no one logged in in my um, shop floor to do so i can either click on my employee name or i can just click on add an operator and i will be able to choose with whom i'm logging in if this operator has a pin code then i will just need to insert it confirm and here we are you see that now you can interact with your manufacturing order we then have the my filter which shows all work orders that have been uh, started by me so on which i am working in this case i don't have any and here i can easily move across work centers i see here my assembly line my painting line and if i click on the plus i can choose what else i want to show here in my customizable menu so I want to display all of them. I can display all of them and quickly uh, navigate through all of them. From here, we can interact with our manufacturing order by performing some actions. From this icon, we can scrap. So we can scrap any of our components for some reason. Um, we can add components, add a byproduct on the go. And a new feature is the possibility to add a work order on the go. So if we click here, we are able to choose a new operation name because for some reason we have to perform an extra operation because we scratched our product, for instance. So paint, we will paint it again and we will select our work center. In my case, it will be my painting line and I can put already an expected duration that in case of planning will be useful. I can then choose my starting date and if I want, I can assign someone. Now I will simply add the work order and you see that it has created here a step in my manufacturing order. I not only have to consume my component and register the production by also recording a serial number for my finished product, but I also have to do some painting. We see here the direct link to go directly to the work center. Otherwise, we see here now in the painting line, a work order has been generated. Another thing we can do is opening from here the backend MO, which is very useful because in one click we are redirected to our backend view and we can also interact from here with the standard view we all know. From here then we have an easy breadcrumb to take us back to the shop floor. I will now go ahead to create a um, manufacturing order with the product for which I have configured different operations and steps within an operation to see what we can do on a work order level and how we can interact with our work order from the shop floor. I will go ahead and create my manufacturing order from the usual view. My product in this case is the table. And if I show you the bill of material, you will see we have two operations. And for the first one, we have nine steps, which are basically quality checks to do for the product. So I will go ahead and confirm. I have all my components on hand. So the um, work order is in ready status. Let's go in our shop floor. We now see our new manufacturing order number 10 that has been created here. And again, we have the direct link to jump to our work center where we need to start working on. I can click here and now I'm here in the work center and we see all the operations we need to do for the assembly line. I will just show you quickly if I create a new one again for the table. Again, everything is available. So in my shop floor now, in my assembly line, I have two work orders. They're exactly the same, but they refer to different manufacturing orders. Here we have two options to proceed. So if we want to easily validate everything, we can just click on the little icon and everything will be validated. So if I want to pass the quality check, I can simply click here and it's been marked as passed. Uh, otherwise, if I want to check what I need to do, I check the instructions, I check a worksheet that I've uploaded for my operation, I just need to simply click on the box and this will open my uh, instructions more, um, more precisely. So I will pass my check. Then it 
redirects me already to the next one. I go on and I can just simply go ahead and validate everything like this. Otherwise, the other option, as I said, is to click on the icon. So in this case, it opens quickly my, um, my folder to upload the picture. I can easily pass these instructions. In this case, I need to generate also serial number for my table. And if I click here, I will be able to generate one uh, manually. So to give my own serial number, if I want to do to generate it for me, I can just click on the plus and a serial number will be generated. Same for the printing, I can just click on here and my um, PDF will be downloaded to be printed. Then I can mark the operation as done. You see it fades out and until it's I still see it, I can always click on undo. Right now it has faded so I cannot interact with it anymore and I cannot go back to it anymore. If I go now in the all dashboard again, I see that from my manufacturing order 10, my assembly has been marked as done and I have my painting now to uh, perform and I have the direct link again to uh, go into my uh, work center. So by clicking here, I'm redirected in the work center paint. You see it's grayed out because in my case, I set some um, allowed employees and Mitchell admin right now is not a valid employee for this work center. He's not allowed to interact with the work center. So I will just need to log in with Mark Demo. Now that Mark is uh, logged in, I can interact with these. I see for my work manufacturing order number 10, the production has been already registered. So there is nothing to do in this case. I don't have any step to perform, but I just need to validate that the painting has been done. And I can then close the production. And if I go back here, my manufacturing order number 10 has been marked as done. On top of all the steps we can have for a specific operation, we also have the consumption of the components. Let me create a new order. And here we are in our shop flow. This order is number 17. You see here that by, um, by consuming components, I mean just validating the amount of units we are uh, actually consuming. So this is a step that if we don't do, by the time we click on close production, Odoo does for us automatically by just assuming that we, we consume what is stated in the bomb. It's basically the same as when in the backend MO, we just click on mark as done and produce all and everything is just what it was reserved is automatically consumed. So this allows us either to click here, so we can just change the amount of units. So we can say, okay, we didn't consume only one tabletop, but one was broken in the process. So we also consumed another one. So we can see we consumed two out of one. And here we can see not only our serial number, but also where it's located. And then we confirm this. Or we can just more easily click on the four units here on the little button here. And in this case, we just confirm again what has been actually consumed. So it is not necessary all the time, but we can just click on it and we just go ahead and confirm. There is then the direct link with the backend MO because when I state that I consume two instead of one, I also see it reflected here. So I'm doing exactly the same as opening the detailed operations from here. So far, I have mentioned the registering production, but it is worth to spend a bit more time on it. So the register production is a button that we can see here with manufacturing orders. Basically, it is a way to confirm the number of units we are producing and if we have traceability to provide a serial or lot number by clicking on the plus. So I will just create a new manufacturing order for a table in this case with no traceability. So I just have the same exact product but without tracking and with the same bomb. And let me just make two. Okay, so now I will go back to my shop floor and now we see that we have here um, the two units of a table to produce and the registering production to make. You see that in case we have traceability, there is a plus. In case we don't have traceability, we just have a two units button. By just clicking on the button here, we just are confirming we are making two out of two. So here we see two out of two, and it also moves the um, MO as in progress because uh, we are 
consuming uh, components as well. If instead we were to edit the information, we can just click on it and specify a different amount. So instead of two, we're making only one, we can simply do it and that's it. For serial numbers instead, I will take this other one, the tabletop. Um, again, we can either click here and provide both the amount uh, produced and the new serial number that we want to uh, give, or more easily, we can just click on the plus. A uh, serial number is um, generated for us based on the previous sequence of the other ones in the system, and it's again moved to in progress. After seeing all the process, we will now focus more on the employee aspect. The employee aspect is important for the time tracking, which is important then for uh, costing reasons, but also for monitoring purposes and knowing who is performing which um, work order. So after setting up some employees and an hourly cost for the employees, and then allowing those employees in our work center by simply entering the settings and specifying who is allowed, I will now launch a manufacturing order. Here it is. So now it's confirmed, no one has started working on it, it's not in progress, and I will go in my assembly line, and let's say I'm logged in as Micho. So Micho is now allowed in this work center, so at any time he can simply click here and the time will start. If he doesn't click on here and he validates everything and we mark everything as done, the duration of the order will match the expected duration that we set on the bomb. If instead we make the timer run, the real duration will be the one that has been calculated through the timer. So now I click here and you'll see the timer starts, the my filter populates because I can easily access all the work orders I have started. And here also we have a notion of how many minutes I've been working for. We can say that then for some reason Mitchell has an issue and he needs another operator to intervene and help him out. In that case, we can simply add an operator and we have Randall coming in, logging in as well at the same time as Mitchell. So this is also possible and making his timer start as well. So that then um, we will have the two operators with probably different hourly costs have been working for some time on the same order. We can just perform all our steps. And close this work order. Okay, now we are still logged in as Randall. We can jump from one or the other by clicking on it if we want. We go back to our order and we see that now we have the, some painting to do. The painting order is grayed out because neither Randall nor, nor Mitchell have access on this work center, which is the painting line. So I will need to add another operator and we will add Mark. Okay, Mark can simply decide to close the production, but before doing so, he will perform the action. So the timer runs also for Mark. And here as well, for some reason, it could be that Mark has an issue. He needs to actually stop working on it and someone else will take over. In this case, instead of having two operators at the same time, what Mark can do is stop his production, which will be recorded anyway. And then we have Beth coming in and starting her own time and her own operation. Once she's done, she will close the production and our order will be marked as done. In the backend, how will it look like? From our work orders list view, by removing the filter, and maybe grouping by manufacturing order, opening our last manufacturing order, we can see the expected duration versus the real duration. If we expand this one, we can see, okay, Randall worked 30 seconds and Mitchell one minute on this. And this will have a cost reflected onto it. So we will also be able to, from the overview of the MO, see the actual cost of um, operations based on the hourly cost on the work center and the hourly cost on the employees. And for the second work order, the painting, we see Beth worked in this case four seconds, which is unrealistic. We can always change here the duration by changing the start and end date manually. And Mark worked 16 seconds for a total of 20 seconds. Again, this will impact the costing. 
Finally, another feature that is worth um, talking about is the um, possibility to move a work order to a different work center for any reason, which could be a breaking down of a machine or an overload of the work center. Um, from here, then from the shop floor, we see here we have one assembly line and a second assembly line here. Let me just change operator. Okay. What we can do is easily just click here and then move to work center. So we see we can just click here and move it to the assembly line two, which is right now empty and anyone will be able to take over the uh, work order.